When it comes to the Gizmondo, the number of games that never released outpaced the ones available for purchase by a sizable margin. The hardware hit European retail shelves in March of 2005. 14 games eventually trickled onto the market over the next seven months. That's more than released on the Atari Jaguar during the same period. By October, it was time to release the system in North America. Eight of the 14 games already available in Europe would be chosen as launch titles releasing alongside the platform on October 22, 2005. Future prospects for the new handheld seemed incredible from the outside looking in. Many games were finalized for release or close to it, only waiting for their date to near so they could ship. This wasn't just shovelware either. Tiger Telematics had gained commitments from major players including Microsoft, SEI, EA, and Sega. In addition, they spent tens of millions of dollars developing games in-house via a handful of veteran studios they had recently acquired. Unknown to many, the financial situation was dire, and launching the Gizmondo in North America was the last thing Tiger Telematics would do before declaring bankruptcy. This is something that we may look at in depth with a dedicated video later this year. The 14 games available before the North American launch is all that would ever release. A near equal number of games were complete or close to it, but never hit store shelves. Clearly, a system that is essentially cancelled during its launch poses issues for future releases, and that's precisely the case here. For the most part, every game on this list can attribute the Gizmondo failing at launch as the reason they were cancelled. In another very odd move, Tiger Telematics went with an interesting marketing tactic, sending out complete or nearly complete games for those with pending release dates in a bid to gain orders from potential distributors. Almost without exception, every unreleased game that has been leaked is due to these pre-release copies being sent out to generate support. For the Gizmondo, the unfortunate reality is that the aftermarket community is non-existent, and those involved in any way are mostly unwilling to talk as they wish to erase their involvement from memory. For a company that's gone under, it's in a unique position where those involved who could add interesting information are less willing to discuss their experiences than some folks under decades old NDAs. With that said, let's get started. Welcome to Retro Impressions Unreleased Gizmondo. I'm going to cover the rules and jump right into it. The rules for inclusion are simple. There has to be some proof that the game was in development, be it an article in a magazine, a known copy of a prototype, a retail order sheet, an interview with a developer, etc. Now, Onto the games. Alien Hominoid started off as a popular but limited free flash game on Newgrounds in 2002. The linear running gun became an overnight success, resulting in the creators returning to the drawing board to create a full commercial release. The game was ported to a ton of systems, so it wasn't shocking that a release was also scheduled for the Gizmondo. A very early build for the Gizmondo was showcased at E3 in 2005, allowing the player to move around the level void of enemies. Shortly after this, it fell off the radar. It's not clear when, but a version called Milestone Build 4 was quietly leaked online to zero fanfare, and it's not really known who or how it was discovered. This version was similar to the one showcased at E3, but now there was an enemy on screen showcasing the first level with one enemy type and the movement mechanics in place. There is no audio, but clearly it's a window into what could have been. Ballbuster is best described as Pong in three-dimensional space. Instead of looking at the side of your paddle, you look through its backside to the area the ball comes in contact with. There are two modes to enjoy. Arcade is about what you would expect with a linear set of levels. The other is Adventure, which has the player travel between worlds and complete various challenges. I'm not sure it does anything new, but what it does is done well. One interesting bit is you start the game by choosing a unique character and racket. This game's version of a paddle. As you play, you unlock new characters and rackets, giving different control options during gameplay. The game was said to be complete and finalized for release. The review copy that shipped out was nearly complete, with speculation being that the only missing item was a two-player option that was slated to ship with the final game. One oddity of the Gizmondo is it offered a dramatic price scale between games, ranging from around $20 for a budget title to $65 US dollars on the high end. This was part of their budget line, and honestly, it's worth every dollar. Even now, the game has never been released on any platform, and it's quite shocking, considering it was complete and an original IP. If you can, I highly recommend checking it out. Am I too good? 
Citi was announced as part of a press release informing investors that Tiger Telematics had purchased Swedish developer Indie Studios. The Gizmondo was designed to be cutting edge, something of a crossover between a mobile device and gaming platform. Of course, that would be a waste if nothing took full advantage of the hardware's unique abilities. Tiger Telematics realized this early on, and two of the first games put into development were explicitly designed to offer a play experience that couldn't be duplicated on any other gaming system at the time. City was one of the two. It was a massive development project for the company, yet it was never showcased outside of a few pictures and promotional material. And now, a word from our sponsor. This is the actual advert for City. Compensation Avalair Reset Advert was received from Tiger Telematics corporate stock. Hello you, it's Guru Larry. City is a multiplayer short time game aiming to provide first class entertainment for Gizmondo gamers in limited time situations, like when you are taking a bus ride or just waiting for a friend. City utilizes the unique GPS functionality of the Gizmondo. It incorporates the player's physical location into the game itself, creating a unique virtual gaming world that can extend to the offline world. City involves the player even further with the Gizmondo's messaging possibilities through GPRS as well as the device's Bluetooth. Not forgetting the inbuilt digital camera to help personalize a gaming experience even further. Casino is a game that was certainly on the drawing board. However, there's nearly nothing known about it. Tiger Telematics announced it along with around 25 games in April of 2005. It's the one and only time I could find that this game was ever mentioned. Tiger Telematics didn't reveal any details beyond stating that Casino would take full advantage of all the little handhelds unique features, so online play seemed certain. It was to be developed by Hustler, a company with no other games connected to it. And with a name like Hustler, it's a bit difficult to track down solid leads. It's hard to say what exactly came of this game or who the team behind it was with so little information out there. One more note before we move on. About a month before closing their doors, Tiger Telematics showcased a new Gizmodo called the Gizmo Bet, which seems to fit in line with this game being a digital gambling online world using real world currency. If Tiger Telematics had one thing going in its favor, it was tons of liquid capital to develop hardware, software, and promote their properties in extremely lavish ways. Even with the hardware being in the early stages of development, the company decided the right way forward was to spend millions of dollars on a sponsorship deal with Jordan, a Formula One team. The deal called for 1 million US dollars paid for two races in 2003 and $2 million paid for a full season of sponsorship in 2004. The system's launch was nearly two years off, and during this period, the Gizmondo was called GameTrack. Jordan was in a tight financial position, so Tiger Telematics was able to negotiate a deal where no money would be paid until Jordan upheld their end. The GameTrack name with zero additional context was displayed on the Jordan car, starting with the British Grand Prix through to the season's end. The first payment was due in January of 2004, and Tiger Telematics didn't meet their obligation, citing concerns that Jordan wouldn't perform to their expectations in the upcoming season. In April of the same year, the game track name was changed to Gizmondo, with then CEO Mike Carender stating, Game Track was a project name for our strategic partners. A new name, Gizmondo, exemplifies the unique versatility of the device to provide many types of entertainment as chosen by the user. This was clearly not the case. Soon after, it was revealed that the name change was part of a settlement of litigation over the game track name. The courts clearly saw the non-payment and reasons given as mere excuses without merit to bypass money due for advertising that was now wasted due to the name change. Ultimately, Tiger Telematics lost the suit, and $1.5 million worth of corporate shares were placed into an escrow account until the cash amount due was paid Jordan, something that would never happen. With Tiger Telematics and Jordan's fallout, it was a bit shocking when it was announced that Tiger Telematics had reached a sponsorship agreement with Jensen Button, a Formula One driver and eventual World Drivers Champion and Constructors Cup winner in 2009. The game known as Chicane Jensen Button Street Racing was intended to be an arcade style Formula One racing game, but that concept was quickly scrapped for an arcade style racer with some licensed supercars, including ones from Pagani and Koenigsegg. This was likely due to the licensing costs associated with the Formula One brand, 
Also of note was the very public and hype announcement of Will I Am of the Black Eyed Peas and members of his music group producing an original soundtrack for the game. While the game was never released on the Gizmondo, a nearly finished build has emerged. So what's the result? It's a fairly solid racing game with an enjoyable soundtrack made by the development team's in-house sound group. Will I Am or anyone affiliated with him is not attached. With Tiger Telematics going bankrupt, most games were left incomplete and without a distribution path. For many, a system exclusive such as Chicane never releasing is quite heartbreaking. However, there's something about this game that almost no one knows. In 2009, key members of the development team started two new companies. The first to release a game was Atob AB, the same name used by the company this team worked at prior to being acquired by Tiger Telematics. They would only release one game and targeted a new marketplace for the iPhone called the App Store. The game called Fastlane Street Racing was one of the earliest games released for the iPhone and was very well received, hitting number one on the App Store ranking list, with many considering it to be the finest racing experience available on any handheld device. I clearly remember reading about this game on Touch Arcade, purchasing it in 2009, and playing the heck out of it. What I didn't know at the time and wouldn't learn until working on this video is Fastlane is Chicane Jansen Button Street Racing minus all the licensed material. Everything else is the same, including the unlicensed cars, racetracks, and music. Crazy enough, the game still works on modern iOS devices, though support for it was dropped years back, making it only a matter of time before it's unavailable again. This connection was discovered by Nick of Retro Break, who documented it in a video way back when Fast Break first released in 2009. Outside of some very obscure offline publications, it's the only reference I've ever seen online to this connection. The development team's other company is called Pixel by AB. They are still around today with much of the same team. Some of their notable games include the Reckless Racing and highly popular Space Marshall series, a favorite of my son Ezra. Before I move on to the next game, make sure you check out Retro Break. Nick has a great channel covering mostly handhelds and has incredible knowledge for each platform's games. It's quite impressive, so make sure to support his channel if you like what you see there. I'll have a link in the description box. Check it out. The Gizmodo used Windows CE as its operating system and even debuted the system in a Microsoft booth at CES in 2003. So when they inked a deal with Microsoft to release some of their heavy hitters on the new promising platform, it wasn't exactly shocking. The deal called for five games in total, three of which were announced and two more were described as being major titles, though the names were withheld. This led to speculation that one must be a port of Halo. The story of Halo coming to the Gizmodo was so big, it started overshadowing the games already announced, causing Bungie to release a statement saying, I'm told Microsoft does have a relationship with the handheld maker, but I can tell you right now that the arrangement does not include Halo. The story doesn't quite end there though. Knowing how huge Halo was, the heads of Tiger Telematics had Gizmodo Studio Manchester draw up some concept work for a fake Halo game to convince potential investors of the company's long-term stability and viability. The whole situation was a ruse. The game wasn't in development, nor was there any agreement with Microsoft involving the Halo franchise. Ultimately, no one really knows what the two unannounced games were, though rumors of Sadeki being one of them has long been discussed. So what about the other three we have concrete info on? You'll have to tune in next time. That's it for now, but it's not the end of the series. Up next is part two. Until then, thank you for watching Retro Impressions.